kind of makes my head spin. <laughs> It's exciting to me, but it's also very overwhelming. Hello everyone, and you are very welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Amy, I'm a musician, I play guitar and I sing, and I make videos that consist mostly of cover songs, guitar content, vlogs, and I also just love music and I love talking about music and music related things. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about perfect pitch. What does it mean to have perfect pitch? Do I have perfect pitch? And do you need perfect pitch to be a successful musician? So firstly, what is perfect pitch? Also known as absolute pitch, perfect pitch is defined as someone who is able to recognize, identify, and recreate the pitch of any note without any musical context. Someone who can name a note without having to refer to an instrument or listen to music in order to be able to identify the pitch of that note or chord. And this doesn't just apply to music, this can apply to sounds in the everyday world. A person with perfect pitch might hear say a car horn and on the spot be able to say oh that's an A without any musical context. One of the most famous people with perfect pitch in today's world in 2023 is probably Charlie Puth and there are countless videos online of him demonstrating this. That's uh, three notes. E -G -C. Mm. And also known as us common folk as the also uh, known as Facebook. For, also known as first inversion of a C major triad. So a C major triad is Your jacket is black. If I hear, uh, like, it, can you play a C, a C sharp is Wow. And, a, and an F sharp is And then a B is And then a G is G. So it's, That's weird. I, I, it's like I can hear the note before it even I, How old were you when you realized that was the case? I, I was uh, 12 years old. Ooh, that sounded that, bad. Okay, so that was actually two notes. So if you play a C and a C sharp together, play, yeah, so it, and it goes up the octave That's like that. That's crazy. A, so A, so A, may, I've never. <laughs> Come on, that's crazy. I used to mess with my teachers in, in school because usually when you put your phone on vibrate, it's an A flat, mm. like a lower A flat. Uh -huh. And yeah, and uh, <laughs> I always used to go. Mm, mm, oh, mm, which is like a really <laughs> stupid and useless. <laughs> But really good, Frank. <laughs> really good, Frank, wow. So on to the next thing you're probably wondering about. Do I have perfect pitch? Even though I already know the answer to this question. But for the sake of this video, let's just try that out today. Why not? I won't be doing by any means a complicated test. I just thought it would be fun to include this in the video. If you're watching this and you have perfect pitch, you're probably gonna be like, child's play. Just to save me embarrassment though, trust me, it's better for me. <laughs> So there are multiple websites online that you can do this. I just popped into Google perfect pitch test and I'm deciding to go with a website called tonedear.com. I originally read it as tone deer. <laughs> <laughs> tonedear.com. So I'm gonna screen record uh, my browser currently. So I'm on tonedear.com, perfect pitch quiz. In this exercise, you will hear a single note. Your goal is to identify the name of the note. So they have a couple different options as well. They have simple, advanced, C scale, and chromatic. So simple involves just three notes, C, D, E. We might start with that one. Maybe I'll do an advanced as well. So C, D, E, F, G. Again, this is very basic, but I just, want to include this in the video. <laughs> so we're going to start first of all with three notes C, D and E. We're going to do 10 questions just so we have a like a stopping point. We'll see how many out of 10 I get right. And so we're going to start quiz. Here we go. First question. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. E. Yeah. A. <laughs> mm -hmm. E again. Yeah. It's an octave. So again, or Sorry, here next. D. Hey. That's an E. That's a D. D again. <laughs> That's an E. That's a C. C. Okay, 10 out of 10 for three notes. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right, we'll, we'll do the advanced one now. C. Yes. Mm -hmm. E. No, wait. G. 
Oh, oh no. Mm, F. Yes, it's an F. <sighs> mm, C. Yes. Mm, F. Yes. Uh, that's an E. Mm, D. <laughs> mm, e. Mm, C. Yes. C again. Mm, mm, F. No. Mm, C. Oh, it's C. No. Ah, this is so stressful. Mm, e. Okay, I got A's out of 10. Okay, that was fun. So, as I've just shown you, I do not have perfect pitch. I already knew the answer to that, but now I've proved it to you. Like most, if not all, musicians, I am more familiar with what's known as relative pitch. Relative pitch means you can identify and recreate notes with a musical reference point. The key difference between perfect pitch and relative pitch is that reference point. Perfect pitch, you don't need any musical context or reference, you can just do it right there on the spot. And relative pitch means you do need musical context and it might take you a second to think about. When doing the perfect pitch test just now, I actually demonstrated relative pitch. You'll notice that as the test went on, I got more notes correct, generally. I know I messed up the last one there, but that's because I was basing the current note off of what I've already heard. Known as intervals, the intervallic distance between the previous note and the note that I was trying to identify. Now, most people have some degree of relative pitch. Even if they don't play an instrument or have any musical training, if you can even sing along to your favorite song in tune, that's the key, then you have a little bit of relative pitch at least. You can distinguish one melody from another melody, i.e. two different songs. The great thing about relative pitch is that it is a skill and you can work to develop it. You could actually work really hard on your relative pitch and get it to a high enough level that it could actually be almost indistinguishable from having perfect pitch. Are you seriously on making the bed? I just made it so that this video would look nice. Unbelievable. Although I'm not shocked, this is a daily routine. For me, I wouldn't say that my relative pitch is amazing, nor is it digging. Can you just settle, please? It's not a garden to dig in. Odie, lie down. See, if I keep talking, Odie, they're just gonna be watching you and they're not gonna listen to me. <laughs> they're gonna tune me out to watch what you're doing. So I'm just gonna wait till you're done. For me, I wouldn't say my relative pitch is amazing, nor is it terrible. It's somewhere in the middle. It's relatively good. It's enough for me to function as a musician, but I'm always learning and always striving to improve my skills. I've been playing guitar for 17 years. I've played enough guitar in my life that I could close my eyes right now and have somebody play me a series of chords and I could identify them. I know what an open C major chord sounds like. I know what an E minor sounds like. I know what an A7 sounds like. I know what an open G chord sounds like. But it's not just the pitch that I can identify, it's also the overall sound of the chord. Chord. This is also specific to the instrument that I know. I might not recognize the exact same chord on a different instrument that I'm not familiar with. Guitar players watching, you'll understand this. A basic open G chord has a very specific sound. As guitar players, we grow to remember these chords because we play them so much. They are so heavily present in the songs that we play usually. At this stage also, I can identify the quality of a chord major, minor, diminished, augmented, suspended, an added ninth, a seven sharp nine, also known as the Jimi Hendrix chord. Guitar players, we know it when we hear it. The more complicated we go, I might not always be able to pinpoint the exact pitch of the chord, but I don't have to because I already demonstrated that I don't have perfect pitch. I use my instrument as reference to work it out and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. That is how the majority of us work. Years of exposure to the same sounds cause it to go in here. In other words, our memory. That's what learning is after all. 
taking in information, retaining it and recalling it later. It's using this memory plus ear training is what helps us with relative pitch, as well as our musical skills all round. Memory and also maybe a little bit of imagination too, as in our mind's ear. Most of us can just close our eyes and play a song in our heads because we remember it, but we can also imagine it. And I think it's important to note as well that memorizing notes is not the same as having perfect pitch. So a couple of examples of me using my relative pitch in my day to day, a cover song that I recently learned for my weekly live stream that I do, which by the way, if you don't already come to that, you should <laughs> come check it out. It's usually every Saturday. It's a live hangout. I read the chat, answer questions, and I play live covers acoustically. The song is Taylor Swift's Betty. And first of all, I didn't even have to pick up the guitar to know what the chords were. I knew the song was in C. Well, because it sounds like it's in C. <laughs> It's a progression we've heard a lot as guitar players. I do this a lot anyway, and I would recommend this for everyone if you don't already do it. But if you're learning a new song, listen to it a bunch of times before you even pick up your instrument. I will listen to a song a lot first and try and pick up on as many details as I can before I even introduce my motor skills into the mix. Do all the chords sound like they belong in the same key? Is there anything that sounds different, like it doesn't belong? Anything that's like, ooh, I gotta, I gotta figure that out. Any melodic variations, rhythmic variations, key changes, vocal phrasing, solo sections. I, I could go on and on and on. That was a tangent, my apologies. But back to Betty, really where my relative pitch kicks in is in the final chorus, there's a key change. The song modulates from C to D, which is a pretty easy key change. And when I play this, and I believe Taylor Swift does the same thing, is I actually sing the new melody in D before I've even played the first chord on the guitar. So I just showed up at your party Yeah, I showed up at your party Will you have me? Will you love me? Will you kiss me on the porch in front of all your stupid friends? So I'm basing my new melody in D off the previous melody I just sang. So I'm finding my new notes based on what I've already heard. I started in now someone with perfect pitch could just pluck that D melody out of their brain as in that pumpkin is orange. That's how they see it. That's how easily identifiable it would be. But for me, I'm having to rely on the previous melody and also my memory too, since I have practiced the song quite a bit. Now there is only one step or one tone in the difference between C and D. So it's not like the hardest thing to do if you're trained. <laughs> Yeah, I showed up at your party. Yeah, I showed up at your party. Yeah, yeah, I showed up at your party. Yeah, I showed up at your party. I don't think I can go any higher than that. But that was just a recent example that was still fresh in my head. Another example is a video I actually did last year when I did a cover of the Beatles in my life. And then I did another vlog style video that I posted afterwards, which was me kind of talking through putting the song together. Since I had to really work on learning how to sing it, there are a lot of intervallic jumps in the main melody and in the main vocal line and in the harmony too. And I was doing a cover of it, so naturally I wanted to get it right. A perfect example of using intervals, which of course involves regular pitch. Regular pitch, relative pitch. I've been practicing singing this for like a few days because there's like a lot of interval jumps in the melody. Like I have to be careful here with copyright. Okay, so say, we'll say like the end of the second line in that goes into the third line. So like da, 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 da. the melody note starts low. Da, 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 da. I'm, I'm like speeding it up so I don't get a copyright claim. Da, da, da. Having to get that smooth and on pitch 
has been like, I've had to practice that. Interval training is really, really beneficial. I remember doing this stuff as a kid when I did music in school and also my classical piano exams. I remember intervals and I kind of hated them, honestly. I thought they were really boring. I would kind of have this sense of dread inside whenever it would come up that we'd have to work on our interval training. I'd just be like, ugh. Even though it's not really that boring. Like I do remember enjoying picking out songs to help identify those intervals like for example my favorite one was a minor second which is Voldemort's theme hmm, hmm, hmm. but I just remember learning all that stuff like perfect fifth major second major third perfect fourth minor sixth minor seventh octave even though I found it really boring as a kid it actually really stood to me now especially as a guitar player and now a singer it really helps me when learning vocal melodies and also guitar riffs and solos so how's about we get a little bit controversial shall we I'm usually somebody who plays it pretty safe so this is actually a little bit scary for me but you know it is almost Halloween so happy Halloween everybody can you learn perfect pitch as an adult. So in this video, I talked about relative pitch being a skill you can develop over time. It's something that you can learn. I mentioned that using your memory is not the same as having perfect pitch. So can you learn perfect pitch as an adult or is it something you're born with or is it something that can only be developed in early childhood? Well, from what I've seen, it's still being studied. There's a lot of opinion-based arguments online about this shockingly. But to offer my opinion, and I know that's illegal on the internet, and keep in mind that this is just my opinion based on very limited reading and research, so please take that with a grain of salt or a pinch of salt, whatever the phrase is. Take it with a pinch of salt if you want to. I don't think it's possible. Maybe this video won't age well in the future, who knows? Somebody that I respect in the YouTube music community is Rick Beato, who has multiple videos on perfect pitch, which I do recommend checking out if you're at all curious after watching this video. His are like way more in depth and way more, you know, ex ex what's the word? Explanatory? Ex I was gonna say explanative. <laughs> way more detailed than what I'm talking about today. But he actually has a video on his channel called, titled, Why Adults Can't Develop Perfect Pitch. He gets hate for even saying that it's not possible. In this video, he talks about how he gets so many hate comments and messages for even just stating that no, adults cannot learn perfect pitch. In this video, I describe that adults can't learn perfect pitch, only babies can. Now this really infuriated adults, a lot of them. As a matter of fact, I get messages every single day telling me that I'm wrong. I always use the example that of all the people I know that teach ear training at Berkeley, at Juilliard, at Eastman, all the greatest schools in the world, none of them have ever had a student come in that didn't have perfect pitch and left with perfect pitch. If it's so easy to do, why don't they have perfect pitch training at conservatories? You would think that they would have thought about that by now after three or 400 years of music schools. He even had a neurosurgeon and I'll say, neurosurgeon. <laughs> but he had a neurosurgeon who reached out to him and claimed that he had learned perfect pitch as an adult, but wouldn't hop on a Zoom call to prove it. Hello, Rick. I'm a Brazilian neurosurgeon and I play the piano. I've seen your video about perfect pitch on YouTube. In the same way that you do, I love music and I also love cognitive science. I want to tell you for sure you are wrong about the impossibility of an adult person learning perfect pitch. It is possible and I did it. It was very, very difficult, took me hundreds of hours of concentrated effort, and I still have to train a lot more. I'm still not good enough with some notes because I do not have sufficient time for training. But I have now almost all notes fixed in my mind all the time. I can evoke them whenever I want without the need of a reference. So after reaching this point, believe me, that was really difficult to learn. I'm now quite convinced it's just a matter of time, technique, and effort. Normally when I get these emails, I just ignore them. But this one, because he was a neuroscientist and telling me that he's right, I figured, okay, I'll respond to it. And my response was, let's get on Skype together and I'll play the notes for you and test you for perfect pitch. I wasn't trying to be snarky or condescending. I was just making a point that a neuroscientist ought to know better. If he's really, truly a neuroscientist, he should know that adults cannot develop perfect pitch. To which he responded, He he, I understand what you mean. I can't do it instantly. 
neither without fails. But I can do it and I am getting better. Okay, it's not extremely fast and I still fail much more than I would like. Anyway, I understand that this ability that I'm training is not the same degree of what you call perfect pitch. There are a lot of people who have claimed to learn perfect pitch as an adult. A lot of them I've seen exist in comment sections of videos. Funnily enough, that's where all the experts lie. Must be a coincidence. But how do we know that they just haven't got really good relative pitch? I don't know. From people like Charlie Puth and people who prove to have perfect pitch, they all seem to agree that they've been able to do since they were children. So, but this brings me to my next question is, do you need perfect pitch? to be successful in music. Whatever success looks like to you, as in being able to just pick up your instrument and play a few songs, do you need perfect pitch? Well, the short answer is no, you do not. To play music by ear, you don't need perfect pitch. Most of us musicians can play by ear at least a little bit, and most of us don't have perfect pitch. I think I've already explained this. Also, I assume, I think, I could be wrong, but people with perfect pitch still have to rely on their relative pitch to some degree when they're playing by ear. Just because somebody knows what the notes are, that doesn't mean that they understand them. They don't understand the music theory behind it. They don't understand how the notes relate to each other. And I'm not saying that you have to do that in order to be able to play music just because you have perfect pitch that doesn't mean that you understand that either there's a good chance that they do since they're probably musicians i mentioned rick beato already but his son has perfect pitch and he's demonstrated this in multiple videos over on rick's channel which you should check out by the way it is absolutely fascinating you may have even seen one or two of them since a couple of them did go viral but when his son was i i don't know what age exactly so i don't want to so apologies for getting this wrong, but I, I'm gonna say maybe five or six years old. But when his son was five or six years old, he could identify notes, individual notes to a crazy degree. But I doubt, again, I could be wrong, but I doubt at that age he could actually understand the relationship between the notes. I mean, he'll learn that if he's not already learning it or learned it. He has a great teacher in his dad. Fast as you can. A flat, C, G, S R. Sing me the note A. a. How about C? C. B flat? B flat. All right, sing me a D flat seven over D major chord. D a sharp A, D flat F, B flat C flat. Very good, Dylan. I'm gonna do the hardest chord we've ever done. This is gonna be a double polychord. I want you to name and sing all the notes and then write them down and sing them. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, listen carefully, here we go. Write him down. That's correct. That clip just blows my mind. The fact that he can do that, I cannot even wrap my head around it. Like it really does make my head spin. The fact that somebody can do that as easy as identifying color. It just amazes me so much. I've also seen people talk about how actually having perfect pitch could be a bad thing. That some people might actually deem it more of a curse than a blessing. Before I started research for this video, I always was of the mindset of like, perfect pitch is the holy grail. It's only for musicians who are especially gifted or prodigies. That's definitely not me <laughs> since I have to work at this stuff. I'm also somebody who struggles a lot with perfectionism, which is a good and a bad thing. So the idea of having perfect pitch to my brain is like, oh yeah, that's something, that's something we'd like to have. The idea that, you know, everything I do has to be perfect and every day has to be perfect, that sometimes when it's not, I can have a hard time sometimes. That's just my own personal thing. So I never really thought about having perfect pitch as being a bad thing. However, some people do say that like constantly hearing things out of tune, that even ambient sounds or ambient noise can sound out of tune and it actually drives some people crazy. Now this probably just depends on the person since we're all different as well and people can have different experiences of the same thing. And I actually can't speak to this since I don't have perfect pitch. So if you do, let me know in the comments and educate me, but it was more just out of curiosity. I could imagine hearing things out of tune all the time, driving me crazy. But under one of Rick Beato's videos where his son is demonstrating perfect pitch, I read a comment that really stood out to me. It's under his video, uh, perfect pitch versus relative pitch, which is more important. Rick Beato plays notes, has his son identify them, and then he slightly detunes the piano. He doesn't tell his son which way. Now I'm going to detune the piano. I'm not gonna tell you in which direction, whether it's sharp or flat. I want you to tell me 
what two notes these are a combination of? A and A. I mean B flat. A and B flat, correct. D and E flat. That's correct. G and F sharp. That's correct. Does it bother you that it's out of tune? No. What does it sound like when I play that to you? It sounds like there's a note mixed with another note, and there's just one in the background. Okay, so what's in the background? Um... Probably the B flat. B flat's in the black background. The A seem. Yeah, because the A's like the one you're actually playing. Okay. So the B flat's in the background. It's in the background. Fascinating. But they're but they're are they mixed equally? Um. Yeah. Very good. So the comment says, wow, listening to your boy describe the detune piano as a mixture of two notes is so fascinating. I never thought about it like that before. I don't have perfect pitch, but I assumed that people with perfect pitch would just hear an out of tune note, but he hears two different notes mixed together, like a mixture of red and blue or something to make a new color. And that's exactly what Dylan, his son said, is that he doesn't hear it out of tune, but he heard the A and then he heard the second note kind of more in the background, he said. Even though they were equally mixed, he just said one was in the background compared to the other. I just thought that was so fascinating. And to compare it to as well to like blending colors and getting a new color, I just, it just is mind blowing, honestly. It kind of gets me excited and also a little bit existential as well. Like this is just why I love music so much. It just, it fascinates me to no end. It's still so mystifying. It just makes me go like, what even is sound? Why is sound a thing? And we have ears to hear and humans have crafted these sounds to make music and make pieces of music and songs that we then listen to. Certain songs form neural pathways in our brain that, that make memories and we connect those memories to people and times gone by and, and it's just places. And, oh, like I just, it kind of makes my head spin. <laughs> It's exciting to me, but it's also very overwhelming. So yes, while all this stuff is so interesting and it's fun to read up about as well, just interesting and fun to explore, I also wouldn't get bogged down in it too much. And that's me saying that to myself as well. Like I said earlier, in my humble, non-expert opinion, perfect pitch probably can't be learned later in life. But if you don't need it, then why would you want to have it? <laughs> now, if you have perfect pitch, Great, amazing, I'm so happy for you. May it serve you well. But the majority of us don't have it and that's absolutely fine. I mean, if it's something that you really want and you're an adult, I mean, who am I to tell you no? Like, go for it. I would just maybe ask yourself, why do you want to have perfect pitch if you don't have it? I just feel like, work on your relative bit. <laughs> I just think that time is better spent elsewhere than trying to train your brain into something that might not even be fully possible. Like there's so many videos online of, you know, learn perfect pitch and it's just repeating notes over like C, C, mm, C, mm. I don't know, or just other people I've talked to just say that that's a waste of time. If you're gonna devote the next few years or decades of your life to have perfect pitch, I can't help but feel like it would just be more beneficial to you to put that time somewhere else, like improve on your instrument, train your voice, learn how to write better songs, or even take up a new instrument and give yourself a new perspective. I don't know, just my opinion, but <laughs> it's my channel so I can give my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I think I answered everything I set out to answer. Perfect pitch is a very small percentage of the population have perfect pitch. I couldn't find a definitive number of like one in 10,000. I I, one in 10,000 cropped up a few times, but it didn't really seem to be accurate because it also depends on what part of the world you're in too. So I'm not really sure, but at least you know now what perfect pitch means, what it means to have it. You know that I don't have it and I'm okay with that. And also you don't need it to be successful in music or playing music or mu being a musician or whatever it is that is your goal, professional, hobby, whatever. You don't need to have perfect pitch, but if you do have it, Fantastic. I just want to quickly mention while doing research for this video, I did a poll over on Instagram stories and here on the community tab. So I just want to say a quick thank you to anyone who took a moment out of their day to answer that question really quickly. Or if you even, you know, wrote a comment or sent me a message as well. Just, I, I appreciated the feedback. It really kind of helped shape my perspective when I was putting this video together. So thank you so much. And thank you also for watching this video. If you watched it all the way through, I really do appreciate it. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it 
subscribe if you haven't already. Also make sure that you've hit the notification bell so that you don't miss when I post videos, my cover songs, my guitar shorts, my vlogs, my live streams every week. Just make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out. There are also a few links in the description to support me further if you would like to. I have a Patreon, I have a YouTube membership community, and I also have a merch store with lots of uh, music-y Irish inspired designs. If you do decide to become a member or a Patreon supporter, you are welcome to a monthly private live stream that we do. You also get your name in the credits of my videos and you get behind the scenes vlogs as well. So I recently posted a video where I went to see my buddy IRL Rosie play her show in LA and it was a lot of fun. It's only a quick little vlog, but it's actually one of my favorite videos and I have rewatched it a few times because I just really like, <laughs> it's, only, it's only very quick, but it was a fun night. And I'm glad I made a little members video out of it. So if you'd like to join or buy merch, all in the description, I really do appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much again for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye!